Okay, so diaries of a former mortician. Okay, this this one is going to be about people who take advantage of people who have just lost a loved one. And there are all kinds, okay? The first one I want to mention is the funeral director themselves. Now, I have seen this firsthand. If a woman loses her husband or her mother and she's single or something, there's always this horny male funeral director who goes after the widows. You know, they've sat down, they've made arrangements with them, they've sat in a room, they've been close with them, they're comforting them in their time of need. And the woman is like distraught and so she doesn't think that this man is actually coming on to her in her emotional time of need so she um, doesn't see the signs and it, um, <laughs> he's trying to hit on her get her phone he has her phone number already because you know it's part of the business so he calls her up I'm just calling to check on you you doing okay you need anything you know I'm, it's, it's hilarious if y'all seen that um, show everybody hates Chris and that uh, that mortician that lives upstairs, saying yes, that is how some of them are. You know, it's it's hilarious. And then, vice versa, you get the 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 widow who is hitting on the funeral director, and especially if they're cute. Okay, they just lost their husband. They just lost their paycheck. Okay, <laughs> I'm not joking, y'all. I have seen firsthand these these widows. And like sometimes when your husband dies, you're not old. You're 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 my age or, or 35, 36, 40. I mean, you're not old. So I see these like attractive women who come on to the funeral directors because they think they got some money. And it's it's hilarious. Like they'll be like fake crying on their shoulder and hugging them, pushing their boobs all up on them. I have seen it, y'all. And it's hilarious because and the, if the funeral director is not attracted to the woman, which is usually the case, because, well, not always, but sometimes it is the case. He's rolling his eyes like this while she's hugging on it. Get off me. But then sometimes there's a mutual attraction. And they will hook it up. Okay. And I'm not playing either. <laughs> I worked for this one funeral director who, like, started dating this lady after she lost her husband and he buried her buried him he would go over her house like all you know oh i'm going to lunch at you know such and such's house <laughs> uh-huh we know what they were doing but it ended as soon as the next widow showed more interest who was probably more pretty they will do this i'm trying to tell y'all <laughs> And the same thing goes for the women. Like, okay, say um, say a man dies. I mean, say a woman dies, a wife dies, and the man is, you know, uh, single now, and he, he has a little money, a little change. You will have women at the funeral trying to get in good with the new widower because they know that he's, now he's single, and, he, you know, they wish they had the life that, you know, Betty had after she, you know, because she's dead now. Now they want Betty's house and Betty's car. So now they're after Betty's husband. <laughs> um, I'm just using that name, y'all. I know it's, I know it's silly. But, and then you'll have some people who will peruse the obituaries looking for wealthy um, women who have died and left a widower. Or sons or children or something who are single and they will you know seek out these funerals and go to the funeral even though they didn't know the person just to get in you know at a vulnerable time you know if you are there for somebody when you know someone dies and you're their emotional shoulder to cry on they're gonna always remember you and you're gonna have a good spot in their you know heart and you know you're gonna be like okay well if you need anything, call me. I'll be there. And if you just need someone to talk to, you know, and men will fall for this. They'll be like, okay. And then like one day they'll wake up and like, you know what? That lady at that funeral was kind of cute. And she gave me her phone number. Ooh. You know, let me call her up. And then guess what? 
<laughs> then they're dating. Then they're engaged. Now she's the wife. So, that's the funny part about the funeral business. You will see the dating in the funeral industry is crazy. Okay, when I was in the funeral industry, I tried to have a boyfriend. did work out because you work so much. Like, I worked 14 hours a day. Unless you're dating someone in the industry, you won't see them. You won't see them. So, a lot of, like, husbands and wives, they end up, like, both being morticians or, you know, or at least one is, like, in the industry, like, working in, in the funeral home as a receptionist or something. Because you don't get to see anybody hardly outside of work. It's, it's a, a job that is long. Okay, so... Yes, I dated in the funeral industry. I've dated some bosses. I've dated some co-workers. I've never... I've never dated anyone knowingly that had lost a loved one, you know. Um, or that it came out later. Like, oh, I, I remember you. You were at my cousin's funeral. You know, something like that. But never had it been, like, on purpose, you know, so... Yeah. So after I got out of the business, you know, then I, then you could have a relationship. Then you could have a boyfriend. Then you could have a husband. Because it's very hard to maintain any type of relationship with such a demanding job. Unless, you know, you make the most out of your time together and, and the man is not insecure. Because you do work with a lot of men in the funeral industry. But it's a male-dominated industry and they do hit on you. Okay. They do. <laughs> oh she okay so that is um I guess I'll call this one I guess you know this I'm not going to really put it in the title but if I did it would be funeral pimping funeral pimping yeah and rem which reminds me at some of the more seedy funeral homes and in, in the, in the bad parts of town I have actually seen hookers at the funeral. Like, they're dressed and they're black, but they're they're a little bit, they're just this much a bit inappropriate, and you can always tell. And they'll go up to, like, the family members who don't know them and have no clue who they are and pretend like they were friends of a friend, and they'll be like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I know, you, I know you're going through it. I know you're going through it. I'll be here for you. Here's my phone number. Call me if you need some company. And they'll give their card to the, to the man who lost his wife or to the son who lost, you know, who needs somebody to lean on. And it's just crazy how people are. But that's life, you know. <clears throat> also, um, you get a lot of people who are heavily medicated or a lot of people who are, you know, drink or drunk from you know trying to ease the pain of losing someone and when they get up there to uh, say a few words about their lost loved one they'll be like staggering and saying some crazy stuff and that's when you hear the organ or the the piano start playing over them that means exit stage left but um uh, that's a whole other story but thank y'all for watching. Um, if y'all want to hear any other things about being a mortician, just put them in the comments and I'll try to answer the questions on the comment or maybe do a video on it if it's, you know, a good question that I can do a video on. Okay.